Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our steampunk let's build of our Victorian courthouse. So, I've, uh, since the last time you've seen the Victorian courthouse, I have finished the exterior and been working on the interior. I wanted to get some progress into the interior before the next video because I wanted to show you, uh, my design philosophy for that. So, the, uh, spire on top of the building is finished, as you can see. Um, when we were working on that the last time. I'm pretty happy with that. And then I did the back. Um, and now the back is a bit interesting. I didn't want to just copy the front. So I went looking online uh, for images. And uh, this uh, rear is, is influenced by, I think there's a, a courthouse in Texas. Or it could be a, a city hall. I have no idea. But it's got this same sort of thing on the back, which I like. And uh, this is going to be facing a, um, a park. Uh, of some kind. Um, <laughs> down here you can see this little test room I made because uh, I wanted to see if my um, fireplace design would burn the thing down before I put it in the actual um, courthouse. Because yeah, when you've got a building that's primarily made out of wood and wool, uh, lighting a fireplace is probably one of the scariest things you can do in Minecraft. Um, so let's head inside and, and I'll show you um, what, I've, uh, what I've got so far as far as the interior is concerned. Um, so here we have the, uh, the entryway which I'm really happy with. I, I think this looks really nice. Um, I like the ceiling height. Uh, the ceiling height is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, it's technically 8, but uh, with all these um, um, uh, slabs here on this vaulted ceiling, it feels more like 7.5. Um, I like to have slabs on the ceiling uh, to give ceilings more depth, uh, which I think is a great height as well, uh, this is, for some sort of municipal building. Um, it might be a little tall for real life, but for Minecraft it feels pretty good. Um, we got the pillars made out of spruce. Um, I really wish that the connected textures were still working because then this would look like a wooden pillar instead of a bunch of stacked slabs. But I still like the look that, it, that, that spruce gives in this texture pack. Uh, we got these lamps, which are glowstone attached to um, uh, hoppers, which, look, which looks really nice uh, in this texture pack. Um, little details in the columns. So now uh, we'll take a look at some of these rooms. Um, so this is the first room, which is the corner room. Um, so you can see that the ceiling's at the same level, so that it fits above the uh, windows. I've decided to put cyan stained glass in all the windows in this building, and all the windows in the entire city, uh, because it will uh, it will really pull in, at least on these types of buildings. It pulls in the roof color, and uh, makes it harder to see into the building from the outside which I like actually. You can still see through it from the outside, but it gives the the interior a, a little, makes it a little bit hazy. Um, yeah, because in reality, you're not just going to be looking through windows and seeing perfectly clear. So, uh, um, especially during this time period that uh, it's supposed to be taking place in where, you know, I don't know. If, I don't know if my decision has any actual merit, but I really like it. Um, so this is the first room, and it's kind of a smaller one. I'm thinking of making this to judges chambers because this is a courthouse, and um, uh, the courtroom is in the center here. On the other side of this wall is where the courtroom is going to go, the main courtroom. There might be a, a f at least one other small courtroom for for le for other things, but f this the main courtroom is the center area. It's really going to be quite large and grand. Well, the judge needs a quick way to get through there, so the only way I could figure out to do it is to put his chambers here and put a little access door here. Of course, in, in reality, if this uh, city was was real, uh, you'd have a probably have guards uh, in this um, uh, hallway of some description, um, and you, this door would probably be locked, uh, so you wouldn't be able to just go right in. But I haven't finished that room yet, um, because interiors are, are tricky for me. Um, the overall styling, though, is, is I think, really nice. Uh, so we'll head upstairs in a moment. There's nothing up there, but we'll uh, give you a look at what's going on. This corner is giving me a little bit of trouble because it's a little too dark. But I, I don't really want to put another lamp over there. Um, I'll figure something out. It's just a little dark in this corner, and I don't quite like how dark it is. Uh, but we can go into this room, which is pretty large, actually. Um, and, and pretty bland. This might actually end up being like a uh, an auxiliary courtroom with some description, a small one um, for less important things. Who knows? But uh, it's a pretty nice room. Uh, it divides evenly, even though the window isn't in the center of the room, and um, because it, it fits on the outside of the building, but the inside it's a little funky. But uh, it's a little dark in the corners, again. Um, but uh, you know, 
not bad. I like it. It's, I don't know what I'm going to put in here, but, uh, you know, it'll be useful. This is my grandfather clock. I used it in the, uh, the same design in the center of the um, clock tower. A uh, little bench here uh, for waiting, just because I needed something to put here. Uh, as you can see, I, I, I made the um, staircase uh, uh, an actual enclosed staircase because uh, if you saw this corner before, it was way too big. This wall was enormous and uh, it didn't feel very good. So um, I closed off the underside of the staircase and suddenly this area is smaller and this size of a painting fits uh, across it perfectly and it made this area look a lot better. So uh, sometimes you make your rooms look better by reducing the amount of space uh, that's in them. Um, so anyway, um, you can see all the doors follow the same, um, the same pattern. I wish I could put doors in the center of the block. But uh, I can't, so uh, anyway, we got stained glass above the doors to give them a little more height. Uh, which I still think looks good, even though the doors are off-centered. Um, there's a hole in this wall. Let's put it, put it back. I hope that, I hope that didn't uh, catch fire and burn out. Because uh, that would be unfortunate. There's fire on the other side of this wall. So uh, don't look to the left too much, because it's not finished. <laughs> Just showed you. But uh, this little vestibule area over here, um, I wanted something to put here after I divided these rooms off. But it's kind of small, so it ended up just becoming a sitting area. Um, which I think works out, especially given what I might end up putting in here. This may end up being the mayor's office. Um, <clears throat> or actually, no, this over here is probably going to be the mayor's office. Um, but I could imagine people waiting here uh, to either you know, see the mayor or whatever is going to be in this room. But uh, it's a little waiting area. Um, nice painting. Stuff doesn't quite line up perfectly, um, but I didn't want this painting right up against the window anyway. I still think it looks nice. Um, the ceiling in this area is quite interesting, but uh, it still works out. Uh, if this was closer together it, with that, it wouldn't work, but it still does. And we got our chimney and our fireplace, the back of it, uh, right here. And if we head in here, we can see the room that I had built over there outside uh, to test this fireplace. So. Oh crap, it is getting lit on fire, isn't it? I didn't make this. Alright, I may have to redesign the fireplace because it does seem like certain blocks are uh, burning. Which is weird. You'd think that these wooden floors would burn first, but no, it looks like that stuff up there is lighting on fire. Huh. I don't know, but uh, I like this room. I like the size of it. Uh, it's a bit of a weird room because I had these little um, bump out bits, these these things here that needed to be here, but then that messed with the square. The room wasn't square, so it messed with the uh, the f ceiling's framework. Um, so I decided to make these brick uh, so that it made sense that they intersected and basically uh, these brick studs, which which gives this room a, a bit of a different feel. It's very interesting. It pulls together everything. I put a little bookshelf over here. I'll, I'll put some seating over here, maybe. I'll put, put a desk over there. And uh, this will be something. Uh, some kind of a room for somebody. <clears throat> I'm thinking of using it as a set for a, a, a series that I'm going to be. Uh, that I want to start. Okay, so then we have this archway right here uh, that divides the um, this side of the area from this uh, center bit. And now you can see this is the ex the end of what I've actually accomplished so far uh, in this building, because interiors just take me a long time. Actually, well, first we're going to go in here, because this this room here actually has uh, stuff in it. Not a lot of stuff, but some stuff. Of course, every room is uh, plagued by bats at the moment. It's not quite bright enough to keep the bats out. Um, a lot more stuff has to go in here because uh, the walls, they look very bare. The ceiling is different in this room because uh, uh, it needed to be. Because it, directly above here uh, is uh, the um, slabs outside. Um, unfortunately what that does is it means that uh, I can't put the sort of vaulted design in here because uh, the windows are too tall. Uh, close to the ceiling. I can't just put wool there because it would go right up against the window. I don't want that. Even already there's all these dark spots because the lighting engine is stupid. Um, 
Well, this is going to be the mayor's office. It's the largest uh, the room room so far. And uh, it's got kind of a prominent location right at the back, right across from the courtroom. And since I want this to sort of be a combination courthouse city hall, um, because I couldn't think of a good reason uh, to have both this enormous courthouse and a city hall, because there's so many, there's so much space in this building, so many rooms there's going to be that, you know, we could very easily wrap all of the, you know, functions of city hall into this building. Um, I couldn't, so I couldn't justify having both. Plus, I didn't have a good idea for what I would make the city hall look like, and I think this building looks amazing uh, from the outside. It looks really great. So this is the mayor's office going to be. I'm going to put a very large desk uh, right in this area, which should fill up uh, quite a bit of this room, actually, on this side. Um, we're going to put... Um, I need to light it up a bit better in the corners. Every room kind of has that problem, because I like this sort of lighting off the ceiling. But I'm going to need to light it up a bit more over there. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty nice. Um, we're going to put some paintings on the wall. I'm going to put something right here uh, to break up that wall. Obviously, a large power desk. Um, and it'll be, yeah, it'll be good. So it's the mayor's office right across from the actual uh, courtroom. And this is the area that the courtroom's going to be in. Um, I'm sorry that it's not more complete but at this point, but, you know, um, interiors. I, I'm sorry that it's nighttime. I don't like it to be nighttime because uh, it's much brighter in the day. Um, but I can't make it day because I don't have any of those functions. Um, hopefully you can see what I'm going for. Uh, <clears throat> essentially, the way this room is going to work is that, you know, the judge stands and everything is going to be on this end of the room. Um, the, the main way into the courtroom is going to be at the back. This door is only going to be used by the judge himself uh, and possibly the jury to file them in. Um, uh, I, I think it's a decent size, uh, sort of a similar in size if you think about it to those um, court shows like Law and Order and stuff, uh, which I grew up watching. Uh, but this is the extent of it. Um, it's going to be pretty grand because uh, not only do we have, are we going to have uh, quite a bit of seating uh, in this room, a couple of rows of benches uh, before we get to the the wall that divides the front area where all the, uh, the jury the jurors are going to be over here um, but uh, we have a balcony uh, we're also going to have balcony seating <clears throat> which uh, I was I, I wanted to do uh, because of um, the movie uh, to kill of to kill a mockingbird I believe I believe they had th that courthouse had um, balcony seating and so I wanted to do the same thing so even though there's not like a, the room doesn't look all that massive here, it's going to look quite a bit larger um, because uh, we're going to have balcony seating, and of course it's a very tall room, um, so it's going to look quite uh, quite grand. So that's the idea with that. That's going to be the courtroom, um, and then over here on this side, I'm not just going to mirror what's on the other side. Um, we have different needs. So we've already got the judge's chambers and stuff. So what I was thinking of doing is whatever room I divide off of over here, make it a bit different, make this whole side a bit different so that it, it does matter. If you come in that side over there, you get that experience. But if you come in this side over here, you're going to see um, a differently laid out room. There's still going to be a staircase here on this side um, because uh, I think there's still going to be a staircase on this side. Uh, what we might end up doing is, uh, you know, people will know that if they're uh, going to court, they come in that way. And if they're going in for, like, another sort of municipal um, necessity, they might come in this side. Um, I could put signs there. So maybe, maybe we won't have a staircase here, but, but it will look a bit different. Uh, we won't have another one of these arches, you know, just um, right on the other side here. It, it, it's it's going to be a bit different. We might have an arch like that. Uh, on this side here and actually have the wall over there um, this little area here might be part of a room over there who knows um, I've got a couple of ideas but um, we're probably not going to be able to get to that today um, anyway uh, for the now that we've got sort of uh, you've seen what I've done here um, let me know in the comments what you think I hope you like it um, I just can't I, I can't get over how much I like this room, um, this hallway, this view right here. It just looks fantastic. I took a screenshot 
earlier and um, this just looks great so uh, it's gonna be the thumbnail anyway for this uh, episode of the let's build because we do want to build something uh, we're gonna work on the courtroom uh, because as you know, see we do have to fill this out um, and I got it's daytime now uh, as you can see a decent amount of light does come in through the windows and uh, it, it looks quite a bit darker at night however um, and it actually looks a bit too dark at night but here's the thing uh, for the time period that this is set in essentially Victorian uh, era because that's when steampunk is mainly set that makes sense all right you had gas lamps and things of that nature back then um, and so you didn't keep places open at night you worked in the day that's why all the factories had just enormous walls of windows because they had to let in as much light as possible because electric lighting and gas lighting was still expensive there was a time period where if you could afford to light uh, candles you were considered quite wealthy that's actually where the I think that's where the phrase uh, burning the candle at both ends came from I don't really know that I just made that up but I know that, that there was but I'm not no I made up the whole candle at both ends thing I don't know where that came from exactly but I'm not kidding that uh, being able to light a candle was considered a sign of wealth at various points in history um, because they were expensive I believe even into the Victorian uh, period um, candles were a bit expensive there was a woman I remember a story about this there was a woman who um, she wanted people to think that she was quite wealthy uh, so whenever somebody would be coming out would come over and it was considered a great uh, sign of wealth a sign of great wealth if you could afford to burn more than one candle okay so um, if you could have let, let's count this room out uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, this room is an odd number of blocks across, which is what I usually will do. So uh, double, just a two door won't work. Um, so we've got a couple of options. One option is that we can make the door three across with um, some sort of a uh, pillar in the center, but I don't really like that idea. The other idea is that we simply have uh, two double wide doors, which is an idea that I quite like. I watched a lot of Judge Judy, and uh, <clears throat> so I just like that idea. But yes, there was a story about a woman who wanted people to think that she was quite wealthy, even though she kind of wasn't as wealthy as people thought. So uh, whenever somebody would come over to her house, um, she would be sure to have more than one candle lit. Uh, but then as soon as they were gone, she would, uh, she would put one out. Um, but she would always keep the one that people could see through her window lit. Uh, but to the opposite of Ebenezer Scrooge, who didn't want to spend any money and didn't want to light his house at all. Um, yeah, so that's I think that's an interesting story. I like that story But my point is that it makes sense that these buildings are not really lit uh, To the point where you'd want to use them at night They're, they're gonna have dark shadows dark corners um, During the daytime they'll be brightly lit but at night they're gonna be a little bit more gloomy because you wouldn't have They wouldn't have been open you wouldn't have whole court at night you would adjourn it for the night and uh, come back in the day okay so the next thing that happens uh, up here is we, we have to we need to line this with spruce um, the reason for that is that of course this is the ceiling of the floor below um, and uh, we're going to be getting into the um, there's gonna be another layer on top of it for floor dang that looks dark why does it look so dark um, as you can see here, we have uh, the wooden planks again, the oak wooden planks. 
but I didn't want those oak wooden planks to go right up against here, so I used a spruce border. Um, so yeah, there's that. And now, as you can see, I've been lining the bottom of all the walls with uh, sandstone. Sandstone being one of the primary building blocks in this uh, in the the block palette that I've chosen for this build. I wish I had my the old. Um, I wish I still had the old white wool. Um, if you remember back in the five, the one point five version of this texture pack, we had a uh, very off white white, and I quite liked the off white white. Um, but now we've got a very white white, although you know it's still got some pattern to it. So, although I don't know if I like the pattern all that much, I do. It looks like canvas or something. But uh, the other white and the other cloths didn't have that. Anyway, um, this wall is going to need some work. Um, quite a bit of work, actually. <sighs> it's going to be a bit annoying. Um, essentially, we're going to have that go like that. We're going to mirror the, the windows, how they look on the outside. And um, so. Yeah, we'll get to that. But now that we got the walls in, we can see how large this room is going to be. And honestly, I think it looks it's quite a nice size. It's very large for a courthouse. In, in reality, your courthouses really weren't this large. You know, the ones in Law & Order are. But uh, Law & Order also isn't a real uh, court. I don't know if you knew that. Okay, so we want to leave enough space at the back so that people can easily walk around. Not, I think two blocks is not enough. Three blocks is probably where we want to be as far as the uh, the area in the back before the seats start. Um, now we want there to be uh, a central aisle as well. So uh, we'll leave these three blocks open and then we'll start putting in the, uh, the seating. Which, I'm still not 100% what I'm going to put against this wall. I probably want to have pillars the same way we have in the other room. Um, if I end up doing anything against the wall, I want to leave some room. Uh, so we're going to leave two blocks of gap uh, over there. And then uh, we're going to do the same thing here. Did I leave two blocks gap over there? I did leave two blocks gap. So at the moment, we're going to have benches that are like this. We're going to leave one block of space between them. Because that's all you need to leave in Minecraft. Oh. Yeah, it gets really dark when you start breaking these things. <laughs> creepy sound uh, so we'll do that and then we'll do that and we'll keep going forward until we get to the point where we want to uh, end it now there's quite a lot of seating uh, in most modern courthouses um, you don't have this much I don't think because you don't have a ton of people coming in and watching the court but Back in the day, uh, if a case was going on, this would be, you know, entertainment. You you'd come because uh, it was a spectacle. So that, that people would show up and, and watch it and stuff. So this is going to be the end. Uh, we're going to put the um, the wall here. We're going to have a gate in the middle. Um, my idea was this, but I don't like that. It's too tall. <laughs> it's just too tall. So we're going to get rid of that. And then we're just going to use fence. Oops. I have broken the wall. Put some fence in there. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Yeah, I can go with that. It looks okay. Um, now, we need to put the um, the stand in. The, uh, you know, the stands where the defense, the prosecutor will sit. Um, will be, I think I want the stands to be here. Here is good. 
Obviously the defendant will be on this side. So we'll put that there. That works for me. Well, I'll make it a bit longer. It's not quite long enough. I need to use some space after all. And that means putting a slab in here. So let me get my spruce slabs. I may end up changing this out for a different wood. I haven't decided if I want the furniture to be a different wood or not. Alright, so actually that fits right in the middle of these rows of uh, seats in there. I think that works. So uh, we'll go ahead and repeat that on the other side where the prosecutor will be. So there's the prosecutor. And then the um, judge's bench will be in the middle here. And we'll put the jury in uh, multiple stacked rows over here. So the frontmost of the jury stand is going to probably be here. But uh, even then, I don't want that right there, so it's going to go here. And then uh, a row up. And then a, a row up. Although I think real jury stands aren't that tall. <laughs> They're pretty tall. Um, we might only make it two. We'll work on that. But uh, we'll at least use that to save the space. Ah, oh, man, it's dark. These don't really uh, spread very far. They don't light up a whole lot of area. We need to put. I need to put some lights in the walls, and of course, we need to put a ceiling on this room. But the thing about this courtroom is that it goes all the way up. Um, not all the way up to the t this, the cyan. I'm gonna put a false roof in there. I'm gonna put. Um, my, uh, just a, uh, a roof just below the actual roof. Uh, probably following this right here. So there'll be a gap between the uh, ceiling of this room and the roof. Uh, and the reason I'll do that is because I want to design the ceiling uh, differently. I don't want it to be cyan. Um, it's probably going to evoke the same feeling as the, uh, the roofs in here. White wool and spruce wood, you know? It's going to be way up there, which means we can't use ceiling-based lighting in here. We're going to use wall sconces. Um, so let's see how many wall sconces we would need to actually light this room up in a reasonable way. Putting them right there, they have a four block gap to the wall. Seems to work. Um, to light the wall. So one, two, three, four. We'll put one there. One, two, three, four, put one there. This seems like a good height. Um, no. no, it's not lighting the floor at all. So let's drop it down. See what happens. Lighting is very important um, for your builds. Yeah, there's no way we're ever going to light the center of this room using wall sconces. However, I think that dropping them down a block uh, helps to light the uh, the edge of the room better. So, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oops. Three, four. Oh. Break that one. So anyway, I hope this gives you an idea of what we're doing. I'm probably going to place... Oh, come on, I need some light. Uh, if I... Um, hmm. I was thinking about a light right there. Or a bit higher up. Anyway, I'll figure it out. But I hope you enjoyed the lo this look at uh, what I've done so far in the interior. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions. Or how to improve this or or oh oh goodness well I guess we can all see one definite way to improve it I guess that fireplace did end up burning the place down 
So anyway, uh, at least we got a little bit of, of excitement. I'm sorry if I, if I, if I sounded a little, uh, less energetic today. I'm still getting over being sick. It's pretty much gone, but it does sap a lot of my energy. Anyway, stay tuned for future episodes in the series. Uh, let me know your suggestions. Um, we're going to end it by once again looking at my favorite room so far. This entryway. Anyway, I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.